So the topic that we're going to be talking about today is vector fields. So intuitively, a vector field is just going to be, so we draw a picture of the x and y axis, or it could be the x, y, and z axis. And intuitively, what a vector field is, is just at every point, it assigns a vector. And you draw the vector at that point. That's, that's what a vector, that's how we think about a vector field intuitively. And we'll get to a mathy definition in a minute, but intuitively that's all a vector field is. At every point in some region in the plane or the whole plane, you draw a vector at that point. That is the very intuitive definition of a vector field. Now, if vector fields didn't come up anywhere, this would be a weird thing to think about. So let's look at some examples of where vector fields might come up. So one place where they come up, one that you've probably seen before, would be like with wind maps. So let's say this is a region in R2 of some, uh, some country, it's part of some area, it's part of some map, whatever. And at each point we want to represent the direction that the wind is blowing at that point and how fast it's blowing. So we do this with an arrow. And the arrow, the direction of the arrow, of course, will tell us the direction that the wind is blowing. And the length of the arrow will tell us how fast the wind is blowing or how hard the wind is blowing. So at both of these points, the wind is blowing in approximately the same direction, but here it's blowing a lot faster than it is here. Okay, another place where this comes up, um, of course, vectors get used a lot in physics because they represent forces. So remember, a force is a vector quantity. A vector is something that has magnitude and direction. So they, uh, forces are a vector quantity because they have both a magnitude and direction. So let's think about gravitational force. Of course, we're thinking in R2 now, um, but we really should be thinking in R3. Okay, so in R2, let's say we have some massive body here, like the sun, for example. Okay, and we'll say that it is located at the origin. Okay, and the idea is, let's say we have some other smaller body here with mass little m. So this would be like a planet located at the point x, y. Okay, we want to be able to determine a function f of x, y that tells us the force vector uh, that represents the force of this mass acting on this mass. And really we're in R2, so we should forget about the third coordinate there. Okay, so we know that the direction of the force vector, uh oh, that, uh, that was not right. You know that the direction of the force vector is going to be in the direction of, um, you know, from the little m to the big m. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, and so if the mass is at the point x, y, and the big mass is at the point 0, y, we know that the direction, let me come over here, do some side work, we know that the direction is going to be equal to the vector x, y, divided by the magnitude of the vector x, y. And really it's negative that because it's pointing from the little m to the big m. Okay, now for the magnitude, we can use uh, one of Newton's laws, Newton's law of gravitation, I guess. It says that the magnitude of this force is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the little one times the mass of the big one divided by the distance squared. And the distance squared is just the magnitude squared. Okay, so overall, we know that f of x, y is going to be equal to this, the magnitude, times the direction. So this is going to be minus gravitational constant, the, uh, the little mass, the big mass. Now it's going to be divided by the magnitude to the power of cube, uh, to the power of three, the magnitude cubed. So it's the magnitude cubed times x, y. Okay, and so then we know that at each point, we know the vector field is going to look something like this. So the closer we move, the bigger the vector, or the longer the vector is going to be, because the closer you are, the bigger, um, the, bigger the, the magnitude is. Okay, so these are intuitive ways to think about vector fields. Um, Again, the most intuitive way is just to think about a vector field in R2 as drawing a vector at every point in R2. So now we're going to give a very mathematical definition of a vector field. Okay, so here we go. Um, let D be a region whoa, 
in R2. So it could be like a disk or a square or all of R2 or something different. This is going to be the domain of the vector field. So a vector field on D. So that's the thing that we're defining. A vector field on D is a function that assigns to each point x, y in D a vector, a two-dimensional vector. which is typically denoted capital F of XY. Okay, so let D be a region in R2, a vector field on D, this is the thing that we're defining, a vector field on D is a function that assigns to each point XY in D a two-dimensional vector, which is typically denoted by capital F of XY. And since it's a vector, we want to know what its component functions are. So F, capital F of XY, Typically, this is a two-dimensional vector, so typically uh, the first component is um, denoted with a capital P, and the second component is denoted with a capital Q. Uh, 